All right, everybody, we're going to talk about, hello, everybody, we're going to talk about double board bomb pots and pot limit Omaha. And uh, I know there's a couple of vloggers out there that have done a couple different things on double board bomb pots. And generally speaking, a lot of times people think uh, maximize pressure and stuff like that. But we're going to go over two hands. One's going to involve a double board bomb pot. I just got done playing another session. Uh, this time I wasn't playing 5-5-10. Uh, or 5-5-10-20. Five, five, uh, this time we were playing 1-2 with uh, most of the time people are straddling. And uh, it was a pretty uh, pretty juicy game. And every time the dealer sh uh, pushes uh, at the win, we were doing double board bomb pots for $20. So uh, our effective stack, we do have the largest chip stack at the table. I think we have like $2,000, $2,100 starting off, give or take a little bit. Uh, we initially we're in for a thousand, so right now we're cruising right along, just on cruise control, just chipping up and whatnot. And uh, <clears throat> we come across a very, very interesting board. Um, obviously, with a double board bomb pot, there's eight way action. There's 160 in the pot, and uh, on the top board comes Deuce Four Nine with two hearts, and on the bottom board comes Deuce. 7-8 with two diamonds. Our hand is ace, three, five, six, Badoogie. So we don't have a diamond draw, we don't have a heart draw, uh, but we do flop literally a complete wrap. Ace, three, five, six gives us the stone cold nuts on one board, and a four uh, gives us the stone cold nuts on the other board, and a 10, uh, you know, provided that they're not red or not a diamond or a heart, 10 on the other, on the bottom board will end us end up giving us... Um, you know, basically third nuts. So I always proceed with double board bomb pots with a little bit of caution. Um, even if I have the stone cold nuts, a lot of times what I'll do because people don't know how to play double board bomb pots is I'll bet small. Uh, if there's 160 in the pot, I'll just fire out 10 or $20. Um, particularly because sometimes people think, oh, the best thing to do is to check raise when you have the nuts. And it's like, mm, that certainly is one philosophy. That's I don't know if that's the right philosophy, uh, but I usually don't play to just bomb, pop, 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 pot. Uh, I, I usually like to value bet. I don't mind potting it on the turn, but potting it on the flop, there's just so many runner-runner possibilities unless you just have, like, an amazing draw. So the first person, uh, I'm the small blind, big blind, I'm in the uh, under the gun and then the cutoff. So it goes check, check, check. Uh, even though that's a, a, a substantial board for me, but I know with diamonds out there and hearts out there, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait till the turn comes up, see if I can hit either one or both, and then I'm going to get crazy because if I have the nuts on one and I'm drawing to the nuts on the other, then I'm going to go nuts. And uh, the guy behind me bets 125. We get a call, a call. The guy on the button just rips it for 475. Fold. Guy in the big blind decides to flat 475. I'm like, well, I'll call 475. So I call 475. The guy behind me pots. And he's got uh, $200 less than me. So he pots essentially for about $1,900. And uh, one guy who put in $125, like, goes in the tank for a little bit, goes in the tank, folds. Uh, the next guy who put in for $125 uh, rips it. Uh, for less. He's like, what the hell? It gets back to this guy over here to my right, and uh, he rips it as well. Um, not for a small amount either. He rips it for uh, uh, 1400 Well, at this point, it's like another $1,000, $1,100 to me. I'm drawing to the nuts on both. So my philosophy in double board bomb pots, first of all, if you're not drawing to scoop, you shouldn't be in the pot. I'm going to say that again. If you're not drawing to scoop, you shouldn't be in the pot. Now, if the river's out there, feel free to bet pot if you have the stone cold nuts on one board to get somebody off of a weak hand on the other board. But essentially, if you don't have the ability to get the nuts on both boards, uh, or like the nuts on one board and the second nuts on the other, you should get out of the pot. Well, in this situation, again, I have the ability to get the nuts. So we get it all in. Uh, huge pot. Um, ends up being like a $6,000, $6,500, $7,000 It was huge. And uh, on the first run out, so we got to dodge hearts because obviously somebody's got nut hearts. And we got to dodge diamonds because obviously somebody's got nut diamonds. 
Uh, the first board, uh, the, the, uh, again, it was deuce four, uh, nine with two diamonds, and I believe it was a nine. And then the second board is, uh, I remember, it was, that was a seven, eight deuce uh, with hearts. So we have hearts on one board and diamonds on the other that we got to dodge. Uh, the run out on the top board is not uh, in our uh, favor, if you will. Uh, a diamond ends up hitting... Uh, the top, or I'm sorry, a heart, it, it's four in the morning, so I'm a little tired, I'm also a little drunk, but a heart ends up, ends up hitting on the top board, and it doesn't pair, and then on the bottom board, on the turn comes the four of clubs, which obviously is our gen card, so as of effective on the turn, on the turn, uh, and the, uh, I end up having the stone cold nuts on the bottom, and on the top board, of course, we already got all the money in, so we can't do anything about it, uh, on the top board, uh, there is, um, uh, hearts out there. So we end up chopping that pot. Uh, but yeah, four ways for a holy boatload of money uh, ends up being a, a pretty good pot. So we end up getting that. And we're sitting there, uh, you know, with a little over $3,000 effective. And uh, there's a couple of players at the table, because keep in mind, this is like one thirty-two in the morning, who are like John back and forth at each other. Uh, they're getting into a, a dick measuring contest. And you know, it's really nice when that happens in PLO because people can just go on tilt and they can just make like the craziest plays. And uh, sometimes it can be dangerous, but if you're patient and aggressive, uh, it works out. Uh, and in this next hand I'm going to go over, this is about two people who are measuring dicks uh, and just being patient. So uh, I've got King King 4 9 with diamonds. Uh, one guy decides to pot it pre, and this is one of the guys who's just jabbing away, rah, 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 which I don't blame him. I mean, he was a little tilted. I understand he got felted on the on the double board bomb pot, and um, not for a small amount, for like fourteen hundred. And he had a thousand before that that he fired off. So now he's you know in for a third bullet. I think he's in for a fourth bullet. I think he's actually like down four grand or in for four grand right now. And uh, so the flop, in any case, comes king six seven with two clubs. If you're curious what the preflop action was, uh, it ended up being $40 preflop, three ways. And one of the gentlemen who's yappering back at the other guy uh, is short stack. He's got like uh, like 180 bucks. And so the flop comes king six seven. So obviously everybody who is inexperienced in pot limit Omaha is thinking, oh my God, I'm sure you potted it on the flop, right? No, the one of the guys just leads out for 125. And... This is a situation where I have backdoor diamonds, I have top set, but that is a very draw heavy board. Somebody's got four, five, eight with clubs. I don't like it. Uh, not only that, but this guy happened to be very deep uh, because after he reloaded on the bomb pot, uh, he chipped up quite a bit. He doubled up right away. So he ended up having uh, in front of him, uh, he had, give me one second, he had 2,700 effective to start the hand. This is on a one, two, one, two PLO, by the way. And I had like 3,000 effective to start the hand. So he bets 125, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to see a turn. If I see like a red 10, I'm going to go crazy. Uh, or not a red 10. Uh, if I see like a red jack or a red queen, uh, if I see a red deuce, I'm going to go crazy. Pretty much any other card, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, I'm going to proceed with caution. Uh, which means I'm probably just going to flat. Now this guy that uh, is really tilted is telling me he's going to double up through me and all this other stuff. And I'm yapping back at him a little bit. I'm saying, well, you know, if you want to put a side bet on this, we can bet whatever you want. You, you want to bet $1,000 that you're going to double up through me or $5,000? I don't care. I'll whip out the money right now. And this was all before the hand. So that just to give you a little history. And the way I do things is it's really hard to get me on tilt. I like to poke the bear just a little bit. If you're really good at controlling your emotions and putting other people on tilt, congratulations. Um, you are definitely what I consider like a, a level four or a level five poker player. You either have a lot of experience people trying to poke you, um, or you just you just don't get tilted because you have a boatload of money, or you just understand that that's the way poker works. So I think most pot limit Omaha players understand that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, I've gotten it all in with ten thousand dollar pots where I was drawing stone cold dead, and all I said at the end of the hand was, "Nice hand." Uh, you can't get upset with people uh, when you're playing Potlum in Omaha, and you can't let your emotions get the best of you. And this is a perfect example of that. So he bets 125. I go ahead and flat. That's the pot. The guy behind us uh, rips it all in for um, 180. He's a short stack. Okay. 
So call, call. Now, before the turn comes up, or the turn comes up and it's a three of diamonds. Aha, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, Josh, you have second nut flush draw. Yes, I do. The first guy leads out and bets pot. And he's super tilted. Uh, so I'm like, all right, pot is, uh, at this point, it's like seven and change, 725, 740, somewhere around there. And then he's got 1500 behind. So, you know, Parliament Omaha, there's times in Parliament Omaha where you can pot control. And then there's times in Parliament Omaha where you can blow up the pot. And when you do have top set, depending on what the rest of the structure is, you can do pot control. Uh, if the board happened to be like King 9-3 Rainbow, I'm not really too concerned about pot control. Uh, on a board like King 6-7 with two clubs and one diamond, yeah, you do have top set, but keep in mind, 4-5-8-9, you're a dog. Uh, but in any case, so the guy bets pot for 700 and change, and I go ahead and call. I snap call. I'm like, whatever. I'm like, I've got uh, a set of kings. I've got second nut flush draw. And some people would be like, oh, Josh, you should have just ripped it all in. When you're playing against somebody who's really tilted, sometimes the decision to rip it all in and not rip it all in really depends on if you hit, do you think you're going to get paid? So for example, in this situation where I have top set and I have a uh, second nut flush draw, if I figure all my diamonds out, all my diamond outs and all the board pairings, like if I put the guy on four, five, eight with clubs, uh, you know, if I do hit, will I get paid? And I, I calculated out that uh, the amount of odds I had, I had about 28 to 32% equity uh, based on uh, uh, the gentleman um, that was all in said, dealer, give us a deuce of spades. And then the guy who potted it for 700 says, yeah, give us the deuce of spades. And I'm thinking, well, obviously you have four or five. And I thought to myself, you might be that type of player that is either tilted or might be bad enough that if I go backdoor diamonds, you're going to pay me off. And actually... If there's backdoor diamonds there and and that happens to him, it's just a cooler on his situation. Uh, if the board pairs and he pays me off, uh, yeah, it might be considered a cooler a little bit, but um, it's kind of a 50-50 on whether or not he should call. So in any case, the reason why I don't rip it there is because at this point, uh, we've been yapping back and forth. Uh, we have, uh, you know, 1,500, 18, I think we each have 1,700 behind the $700 bet. Or the, the, yeah, the seventeen the $700 bet. So uh, I just flat. I'm like, I think if I hit, I think I'll get paid. Uh, and I keep thinking to myself, I don't need the ace of diamonds. Just put out like the four of diamonds. Not the four of diamonds, but like the five of diamonds. Or put out uh, the deuce of diamonds and it'll look cheeky. So lo and behold, the river comes out and pairs the board. Puts a six out there. He checks. I jam. I'm all in for 1800 and change. And the guy goes in the tank forever. Really forever. Now, here's the one thing I will tell you. If I had four or five in this situation, I make the same bet 100% of the time. Uh, the reason why is because there's $1,500 side pot. Uh, the main pot, yeah, it has like 700 bucks in it, but there's $1,500 on the side pot. Uh, and if I have four or five and I can get him to fold, then I'm only ch chopping the pot two ways versus three ways if I figure the other guy's got four or five. Based on what he said, uh, after the turn, dealer put out the deuce of spades, I, I was thinking, ah, he's probably got four or five. Uh, now, this is one reason why you shouldn't talk during a hand, because when that guy says that, if the gentleman who uh, checks, because he's out of position, thought for a little bit longer, he might have remembered, oh, this other guy said... Um, you know, this other guy said, please put out the deuce of spades. He must have four or five as well. So it's kind of hard to put me on a four or five there. And I didn't even three bet pre because we were so deep. And I figured if I did hit, I would get paid. So he goes in the tank for like a solid minute and a half. Now, I, don't, I think I might have called t clock on somebody once in 16 years. Um, I'm always of the opinion, whatever, you just got to work through your process. I'm not going to call clock on you. Uh, and I did a couple of things that are supposed to show weakness, um, you know, riffling chips and then messing the chips up. Um, you know, I tried to lower my breathing, tried to keep my mouth open just a little bit. You know, I tried to look uncomfortable. Uh, I tried to do all those things. And after about two minutes, another player calls clock on him, which I don't really blame him. I mean, it's not a time break game, but he ends up calling clock and uh, the floor comes over, tells him he's got a minute left to do. 
And uh, at that point, I was kind of thankful that he called clock because I'm like, well, it is two in the morning. The guy might make a mistake and decide to just call. So the guy goes in the tank for about another 30 seconds and then just calls. And uh, we obviously scoop that for a really big pot. But yeah, this session I wanted to talk to you about, again, double board bomb pots uh, and just a, a very interesting hand that happened. And yeah, we, we were in for 1000 uh, we were out for 5200 and change, so we're up $4,200. We're having a, uh, we are doing a sun run here in Vegas, basically. Um, I've been here for three days and uh, uh, getting second in the tournament and then the cash games. I think I'm up like 15, 17,000, somewhere around there, uh, all in all, uh, which is just a lot. Uh, it's really good to be up that much. But uh, in any case, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I appreciate everybody appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, again, I know there's no table videos of it. If you do want table videos of it, please uh, make some comments in the video uh, for however many of you are watching this, and uh, I will start incorporating that. Um, but I am absolutely exhausted. We have a, a tournament tomorrow, uh, straight up high only. Uh, tournament play is a little bit different than cash play, obviously. Uh, generally, if you've got ace, king, queen, x, uh, that's a good hand to rip it with. And in tournament play, uh, you should play a little bit looser early on. Uh, matter of fact, you should play 100% of the levels uh, in PLO high and PLO high low uh, for the first three levels. 100% of the hands, not 100% of the levels. But 100% of the hands for the first three levels, unless you have something like three of a kind in your hand with another card that doesn't connect it. Uh, and the reason why, and I, I, I was explaining this to a couple other people who are at the PLO table, I said, the reason why you do it is because when the blinds are 100, 100, 100, and you start off with 20,000 chips, so basically 200 big blinds, in PLO, it's not that uncommon that people will end up donating 200 big blinds uh, in the first level to another player. Um, it's happened to me uh, by getting coolered. But not only that, but it's it's pretty common. Um, it's a lot more common than you think. It's not something that happens in No Limit Hold'em very often. Uh, you literally have to have like aces versus kings or somebody who's just trying to gamble or somebody who has the same philosophy as you do. And they're like, well, three bullets is every tournament. Uh, let's see if we can run it up. So yeah, we end up, uh, we end up doing really well tonight. And uh, we got to get some sleep. Because tomorrow we got to do about a 40-hour session because I don't have a hotel room because all the hotel rooms in Vegas right now are just astronomical. They're all five, six hundred dollars, four, four hundred, five hundred dollars. Like to stay another night here in the Venetian is four ninety-nine plus resort fee plus taxes. It ends up being just shy of six hundred dollars. I'm like, well, fuel took my arm away. Your hotel is going to take my leg away, basically. So again, thank you for tuning in. As always, everybody, please play smart and run like a god.